Cool. Um, so I guess we need to give again the intro. So this is a, a little bit of an informal meeting to discuss the current progress of the dependency proxy. The backend implementation has been made in the past milestone and we realized that there was a little bit of disconnect on what we have and what we know that we have and what we could work on. So this is more of an informal catch up around it. Yeah. So um, what we currently have, well, let's take a look at what, I'm gonna just open up a dependency proxy page so we can look at what's currently being displayed. Um, and then I can hopefully let everyone know what is not being displayed. <laughs> um, Do you want to screen share? Yeah, so. I'll share my screen. I'll move the Zoom window, so the screen share to the big monitor. So apologies for my the side of my face. I'm gonna give for everybody. No problem. And hopefully this doesn't freeze up my computer too much with my multiple monitors going on. Okay. Are you seeing the um, the screen? Yes. Cool. So currently what we have is a page where we show if the dependency proxy is enabled, we show the URL and we show how many blobs of images there are and the amount of space they take up. Okay, but we don't show really anything beyond that yet. Um, one thing I would like to note that I've been meaning to note for a long time, and this should be a very fast update is on this dependency proxy URL, um, I think we should remove the HTTPS prefix because this is actually not a URL. This is the image prefix for when you pull an image. So when you do like Docker pull something, you use starting at gitlab.com forward um, and it's not actually a URL. Uh, I don't think that's a caused anyone confusion yet, surprisingly, but um, it's something I noticed in the last week or two that I, I realized we should probably yeah. fix up. Um, so I can I can open an issue for that. I'll make a note right now so I don't forget. Well, if we end up rewriting this UI yeah. in, in a view app, we can probably add this in the upgrade there. All right, and then, um, so I'm gonna pull up another screen here. This will be a terminal that I will magnify. And this is just, I'm gonna look into the database. Oops. We won't look in ask you why you are looking for David in the terminal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll look in the database and we'll see what we have. So um, we have dependency proxy blobs, which is what we're currently displaying information from. And so this is where we're getting the number of blobs in a given group and the we just sum up the size and deliver that in order to give this size. Um, none of this other information would be helpful. Um, maybe the created at or updated at could be helpful at some point in the future. <clears throat> but I think what we really need to make use of is we now store the manifests, um, which give us some more in interesting information. Um, so the manifests, we can do the same thing. We can say we have so many manifests and they take up so much space. That doesn't really add that much information other than we get a more um, realistic idea of what the total space is being used by the dependency proxy. But the user will be able to see if something is proxied in the proxy by the manifest digest. Yes. So yeah. what I think we should add here is um, we should maybe list each of the dependency proxy manifests that exist in a given group. Um, and we should list out, we can list out the file name and the digest. Um, and that will give them the image name. So if they pulled Alpine latest, then it, the file is named Alpine latest. So it'll give them the image and tag that they've pulled as well as the actual digest of that image, um, which is the unique identifier. So I think hey. that's probably the first thing that we can really like add to add a lot of visibility. 
Okay, so I have two questions. First for Ian, do we, we have a design for this, right? We're basically reusing the registry uh, design, right? So where the dependency proxy things are the tag list, right? Yes, to both of your questions. We are going to be pulling a lot of the same UI elements from the package registry and container registry over to this. And there is a design specific for the dependency proxy. We made a lot of progress on it. It's been a while, so they need to be revisited if we start moving into any complex direction. OK, perfect. And then the other question is for Steve. Do we have any API for this? Um, <clears throat> no. <laughs> We do not. Uh, do you know? Do you happen to know? Yeah, this is this is being rendered by a Haml view, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so we don't have an API for either of those yet, um, and we should probably use GraphQL. Yeah, um, we shouldn't we shouldn't make REST a, a API anymore in the stage unless yeah, required. So I think that's the first thing is we just need to. Um, Set up GraphQL to, to get this data from the back end. Um, and, and then we need to support all some mutation to enable the proxy, right? Yes. And that, sure. yeah, that might be a little, I don't know where that lives actually. That, that I mean, we, we do have something that I think is in the controller, no? If it's, um, if yeah, it's, it's probably, uh, memo pages in the controller. Yeah, and it probably goes through the group. API maybe it was where that would end mm -hmm. up living. But yeah. Um, and then the last item that I think would be good to add is we do have a an API for clearing the cache. Um, and that currently exists as a grape API. Uh, we could probably also add that as GraphQL when we work through this, but um, it would be good. And I think we talked about this in the design to you know, have some sort of button to just like clear the cache from this UI. Yeah, I, I don't recall the design right now. I think Ian probably has, is a bit more yeah. fresh. Do, do we have a button for the cache? Because that's a feature that we can give them right now, right? Right, that the API does exist. Uh, even though we should move everything to GraphQL for consistency, but yeah. Well, if, if it's just a delete, not really, we can just call. Yeah, yeah, it's just a delete. API. But um, deleting the cache will make the, the manifest disappear, right? Yeah, it removes all of the blobs and manifests. Is it is it synchronous or it's a worker that does this? It does it in the background. Yeah, it's a worker. Oh. And do we mark them as, so it's a soft delete or the user will click delete and then the UI will update whenever, wherever? Um, yeah, currently there's nothing marked or anything, so it's. Yeah, I think we this don't is something before. Until it runs. Yeah, before putting this in the UI, we probably need a flag that says mm. "cache mark for deletion." It's the same as we do in container registry. Ian, what do you think? Wouldn't generate more confusion if they click delete and nothing happens. Yeah, it's the same thing as a container registry. It, the ideal performance would be I click the button and it is now gone. But if we can't actually perform that, we should show in the UI it has been marked for deletion. And then when it is actually removed, we can actually we can take it out of the UI. Yeah. Okay. So we open an issue for that, and so delete status flag something like that, right? Yep. So this is actually uh, our small, uh, our small, small, small MRs, right? Small issue and small MRs, yeah, so I the camera will be picked. Everything uh, here is, is fairly like small or at least very straightforward back end. I mean, there'll be the GraphQL, there'll be in some initial setup because we'll have to create all the new types, but I think we're getting better and faster at that. Yes, yes, definitely. When we actually manage to schedule whatever the work for the GraphQL is, um, if that's coming before the front end, can we also have- Abs Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> Just let me know when that's happening, whatever milestone it's in, to make sure that I have a chance to put the design together. I can do it at the same time, and then we can pass both the GraphQL stuff that we need and the design to the front end at the same time. Cool. Cool. Well, this is actually a lot of issues to create. Uh, yeah, I wrote down some that. notes, so I, I'll, um, I'll create them and I ping you all on it.
Okay. Uh, most probably they'll be ready either this evening or tomorrow morning, not, not before, because I have another meeting after this. Okay. And let me know if you need some help with uh, creating any. I'm happy to create some of the back end ones, especially. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe I will uh, bootstrap them and then I will just ping you if you want to have details because you, you do okay. have better context around this. That sounds good. Yeah, I'm trying to remember if there was any other major design ideas we talked about. I know we had talked about some other like possible future things once we start working okay. more with this data, but I don't think any of that stuff exists yet. Um, like can, looking can at we the data we have. What? A manifest? So a manifest. we can delete a single manifest, but manifests are really small. Like you can see there's 146 blob images, which are 4.28 gigabytes here. So that might be comprised of 10 or 15 manifests, which the total sum of that might be a megabyte. <laughs> yeah, but um, so the reason why I'm asking is sometimes you have cache issue and there is that thing that is bothering your cache that you want a new version for some reason and you want to remove only that, not everything. Would this be a Oh, yeah. Case? yeah. Um, well, the way it works is if you pull um, either the same version or a new version, it'll overwrite the existing version. Yeah, but first you serve the one that is in cache, no? No, um, because the digest uh, is unique. So if like oh, if Alpine so latest, yeah, if Alpine latest changes, the digest changes, even though the tag name is the same. Um, mm -hmm. And so we check to make sure the digest has changed before. Um, should we support things like uh, searching and sorting in the API or is things that can come with a second MVC step, uh, iteration step? Um, yeah, I think actually when we build out the GraphQL, well, we should add it to that issue to, to see if, you know, if it's going to be easy to just quickly add like, you know, sort or search by um, the uh, name or digest here maybe. Um, to be able to find the specific tag and see how old it is or something like that. Because uh, do, uh, uh, what do we have right now to find these things? Nothing, right? So Nothing. we won't have like finders. For example, now that I'm building the packages GraphQL, I already have the finders written. So it's just a matter of saying, you know, use this finder. And sure. And we are happy about it, so we will probably, hmm. yeah, maybe we can uh, break it down in steps and add search and sorting later. Do you think it will be valuable in regardless to do it in multiple steps? Even I though... don't see a problem with doing it in multiple steps. Um, it is, I just want to make sure it's captured in the long term goal. I just could imagine very quickly if I start getting a lot of these hashtags. It would well, be easy. It, it, like, it would be nice to get it. Definitely, we will need to include pagination from the first iteration to avoid that you have, I don't know, two million blobs and your web page as, as soon as you try to open it, right? Um, That's a good call out. The one thing we don't have, and this is actually directly the same problem as the uh, container registry, is the no. Um, no, 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 no. Whatever <laughs> it is, I'm rejecting it now. <laughs> the blobs are not related in any way to the manifests. That is obvious. <laughs> so when you delete a manifest, there's no possible way to delete the underlying blobs. It's the same thing with when you delete a tag, you end up with all, like, you know, it doesn't actually free up all the space. <laughs> So it's a, but luckily, since it is just a cache, the, the idea is that there's no harm in just clearing it at any given point in time. And I know that's- Have we considered, do, sorry, the, how long is the cache? Like how long does that tag actually end up sitting um, there before it's untagged for the manifest and then sits in a different <laughs> storage forever? Um, currently forever. <laughs> um, yeah, we do have, we do have, I, I believe there is an issue somewhere to um, add a setting or something for regular uh, cache cleanup. So you can just say like, you know, delete the cache every two weeks or something like that. Okay. 
as we are moving towards this, the consumption based pricing model, a way to be able to clear storage is actually very important. And so we need to be paying attention to that. In terms of priority, we should definitely like rope in and then figure that out later. But just to call out, if we have this like offering of a cash and it caches everything, which is great. And then all of a sudden they get the bill for 500,000 gigs of stuff that they didn't sure. know they had and couldn't get rid of, right? <laughs> that, it's something we want to avoid. No, yeah, absolutely. Is the dependency proxy using the container registry behind it or no. not? Okay, good. So deleting things doesn't have all the issue of the container registry. No, yeah, it's stored. These files are stored in either object storage or local storage, depending on how it's okay. configured. So, for example, if you wanted to have a clean up policies, which is basically cache expiration uh, for this thing, we could implement it full blown from the get go, not have all the nightmares that is the container registry right now. Or it won't be in the future, but just yeah. to double check. I think, I think that's true. But like I said, like it's kind of like, you kind of with the blobs, you you just clear everything or you clear nothing. Mm -hmm. um, and um, the dependency proxy, um, the this is a question. It's a general question. Enabling the dependency proxy shouldn't it be moved to the setting package and registries? Um, yeah, I page? think that makes sense. Um, I'm not sure if there's a because, reason uh, for putting it here initially. Um, I think it was a uh, iteration. Kind of, yeah, I think it was just prototype kind of style. Are, did we do we check for the permission of the user or, uh, before showing this page? Yes. Okay. And I know, I don't remember the exact permission, but yeah, like certain users don't see the enable and disable button and- um, Just the URL. Okay, so yeah. it makes sense to move the enable proxy under the setting page. And maybe this is something that we, uh, you know, I'm gonna open an issue for this as well. Actually, I'm Ian, what do you, do you think about it? Shouldn't it be? I would agree. It, it would be, be nice to settings. See under settings and then. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yes. yeah, agree. that makes a lot more sense. Yeah, you can see when I'm not logged in, um, I don't see that button. Okay. All right. I also imagine that pretty quickly we're going to get a lot of other settings, like the yeah. expiration for the cache as one of the settings and the cleanup for the settings or if I would imagine the dependency proxy when it evolves to be able to do NPM caching and those other things like that part of the settings will get just as complicated. So mm -hmm. there's no reason not to put it there now. Yeah, and the reason is that, um, you know, this is moving that button away is technically a breaking change, right? I mean, at least visual, at least documentation, we can tell the user this move. So the sooner we do it, the least we impact them. I don't know, do we have a usage statistic for the dependency proxy usage right now? Um, I believe there's something in our um, metrics. I haven't looked at it recently, but I think mm -hmm. Tim has something set up there. Tim is always very excited to show the charts that he has built in usage Bing. So I'm sure if you asked him, he would be delighted to tell you. Yes, <laughs> I'll, I'll ask <laughs> today. <laughs> um, yeah, I believe last I checked, there's like, on GitLab.com, I don't know, a few hundred, uh, maybe a thousand groups are using this like regularly. So it's not uh, a massive amount of usage right now, but um, there is usage there. And you called that a really good thing, Nico, that maybe we should, when we move that button and create the settings and all of that, we should make sure the settings, the button, the documentation, maybe are all released at the same time. Not sure yeah. how that would work officially, but like making sure that we're, we made a big change and we're making it very clear. This is what happened. Your service isn't impacted. It's exactly the same. We just did this. Yeah. So I think, I think we have a clear path here that we should, um, we should, first of all, we should have API to get and write this information. And then the first MR will be take this enable button, remove it from the ML view, add it to the settings, write documentation with a change log that clearly state, move dependency proxy setting to dedicated setting page, right? And that's one MR. And then and then we can build on top of, of that. But that's gonna be a little not big, but a little bit of a lot of DRI uh, on top of it. 
did we, this might be tangential and I apologize. Did we move all of our settings over to our dedicated page? No, not yet. We just add the new Maven duplicated settings. Um, this is for groups. So we have the dependency proxy and there is another settings that needs to go there. Um, the cleanup policies. No, the cleanup policies are per project. Uh, I feel like I know this one because I, I was part of it, but I can't remember. It's like a, it was two months ago. Mm -hmm. it's too there's, there's an <laughs> yeah, it's like ancient history two months ago. Uh, yeah, there's a, there is an issue for it though. Um, so I can pull it out if you are interested to uh, look at it. Okay. Cool. Um, do we need to do the reverse? Which means look at the dependency proxy design and look and but, so we already identified a lot of work uh, here for everybody. So maybe we is it satisfying the outcome of the meeting or uh, I, don't I think know. we definitely have a little work to do moving forward. Um, I did remember the other group level package setting is the um, duplicates. Yeah, and that's already there. Oh, it is already on its own page. Yes, it's nice. pack so group settings, packages, and registry. And that's actually the one that created that page. Oh, cool. <clears throat> I'm happy with the outcome and don't need to review the designs. I think one of the next steps I would like to take in this is to sync a little bit later, once we've kind of moved on, on this with Steve about what's going to be built next so that mm -hmm. I can make designs that match what's going to be built next. And then we can start rolling these out more in step and in sync with each other, as opposed to what this kind of felt like, which a lot was built and then we had to kind of figure out yeah, how so to like add it to the UI. The, the good thing is that if we keep proceeding with this order, backend API, the moment that we release an API that will serve the front end and anybody else who uses the API, the feature is basically released already because, okay, they don't have a front end to deal with it, but all the information are there. Uh, so then we can build on top of the existing API. Now it's the problem is to kickstart the communication layer based. Right. Yeah, I think two things that are worth like noting are that whenever we work on really any feature, if there's new functionality, we should question like, do we need to add GraphQL APIs? And do we need to then create a design or front end follow up? Um, mm -hmm. That's probably a good thing to know maybe in our process moving forward. Yeah, in general, I think if there is an API for it, there is an interface for the user to deal with it, right? The front end is just um, uh, syntactic sugar <laughs> for dealing with the API, right? It's just a facilitation in hand. Sure. It would also okay. be great if, as we're building the APIs and we identify that, if as a design I could get updated when there's a new API, because then there's also the conversation of, I didn't really consider that this was going to be a thing, but that could be a UI feature that we could build. Mm -hmm. So we get yeah. kind of both both directions for that. And I think that's kind of what we ran into here was we were like, we need to store manifests in order to help with Docker Hub rate limits. And then it was like, oh, we have some information now. What can we do with this? You know what would be fantastic? If we will be able to connect the digest to um, if it exists in the container registry. So pinpoint the tag, right? Um, that will be great because the digest is unique, right? Even though they, they may not come from us, most probably they won't come from us, but if it's internal and, or if digests are unique by definition, right? They're, they're not, doesn't exist, don't exist two digests that are the same. Um, I, think. Yeah, I think, yeah, that's the idea. I mean, with this, Right now, everything is pulled from Docker Hub. Like there's nothing pulled from the uh, container registry. So we could potentially find ways to link to, at least initially link to the Docker Hub um, image that was pulled. Actually, actually we could do that. We, I'm quite sure we can do that directly by knowing the digest and, yeah. uh, and, and open a link for it. Yes, Ian? Um, you like it? I'm not sure if I'm understanding correctly because you've dipped it into jargon I'm not comfortable with. But if we know the digest and if we know the digest, we're able to go to Docker Hub and see that detail. Users have specifically called out that they would want after they've looked at the interface and they see a tag. They don't want us to provide additional detail necessarily. 
except for state as a cached item, they want to be directed back to wherever it originated. Yes, so in this mm -hmm. case, being able to link back to Docker Hub would be a huge value add with very little work. I mean, I say very little work because it's me and I don't have to, but. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I'm looking, so like, I'll link this in the chat. So we could probably link directly to a page like this. Um, so like when someone pulls Alpine Latest, we have the name Alpine Latest, but we also have that digest, which is directly in the URL. Yeah, that's perfect. So that's we, exactly what we could do it. Yeah, we could build that URL and, and send send people there. That would make it really more useful. Are we happy to direct people outside of GitLab to a competitor registry? I think we've talked about this with like, because if it's pulling from the source registry, like if we pull a package from npmjs.org, we want to show that that's where the package came from. And similarly, mm -hmm. we'd want to show like, this is where the image came from. Maybe we should provide a, a button that says import in the GitLab registry and maybe. <laughs> <coughs> there Sorry. is actually a need eventually that when a protected branch <laughs> releases a new release and is a part of an environment that is special. They want this ability to make immutable builds. So if they wanted to, they can go back to the special build and just rebuild it. That means permanently caching things that are attached to that. So eventually there will be a need, I'm warning Steve early, <laughs> so this is a possibility, but there will be a need to be able to cache something permanently so that they can always rebuild whatever they built years later. It's weird. I don't understand why someone would do it, but many users and customers have talked about wanting it. Okay, yeah, that's interesting. I like that. Um, that also goes along with the idea where if someone wanted to move from like a, a given registry to GitLab, it was like, a, you know, first you pull it in through the proxy and then you can go to the cast page and say like, you know, keep permanently. Yeah, I'm glad we- Lots of issue to open. <laughs> That's exciting. Cool, yeah, it's good stuff. Um, I think we are at time. So actually past GitLab time, as Dan would say. I'll, I'll upload the recording. We didn't say anything reserved, right? I'll upload the recording on YouTube and put it on the channel if somebody wants to consume it. Okay. Oh.